Hello, my name's Jeff Kersey, and in this programme I'm going to give you lots of hints and tips to help you with your paintings of trees, woodlands and forests. For this one I've drawn the tree, applied masking fluid to it and then I've painted the background in. Now that the background's dried I can remove the masking fluid. I'm just going to use the tip of my finger to rub it away like that. I find if you try to pull the masking fluid you're much more likely to tear the paper. And you can see that that comes off really easily without any damage to the paper. So now I've got almost a silhouette in white paper that's the exact shape of the tree and I'm going to mix some colours. So I'm going to mix some raw sienna and burnt sienna to give me a sort of warm orange colour. Then I'm going to take a wash of cerulean blue. No other colour in it, just cerulean blue and water. Before mixing a third wash of burnt sienna and cobalt blue to make a sort of grey brown colour. I'm going to put a little arrow at the top left hand corner of my paper just to remind me of the direction of light and I'm now going to take the number 8 brush loaded with clean water and just dampen the whole of the tree trunk. This will give me longer to work on it when I start to add the paint. And I'm starting at the lit side of the trunk with the wash of raw sienna and burnt sienna that sort of orangey yellow, just washing that in and then straight away I'm going to add a touch of the cerulean blue. Now the blue with the yellow will go slightly green and that's a good idea because you often do get a bit of lichen or moss on tree trunks giving them a slightly green hue. I'm going to add a touch more burnt sienna to the mixture of raw sienna and burnt sienna so it's slightly redder and touch a bit more of that in, more towards the middle of the trunk and a bit more cerulean blue. I'm encouraging these colours to mix and blend on the paper. I want them to work together and mix on the paper rather than in the palette. And then to emphasise the shadow on the right hand side of the trunk, I've got this slightly grey brown mixture made from burnt sienna and cobalt blue. And this is a little bit thicker than the colours that went before it to make it just that little bit stronger for the shadow side of the trunk and just put my darkest colour in at the very right hand side of the trunk furthest away from the light to really emphasise that rounded cylindrical look. And while that's still wet I'm going to look at this little branch that I had masked out as well because the light is coming from the left hand side the underside of the branch is in shadow so I'm going to a bit smaller brush I've got a detailer here and we'll drop in a little bit of the cerulean blue as well to create that slightly greeny grey and then I've got the mixture of burnt sienna and cobalt blue again and I'm just going to touch that in at the underside of the branch like that. I could use that colour maybe for a smaller branch coming off there. Okay so we'll leave that to dry. And now that that's dry I'm just going to add a few finishing touches by putting a bit of texture into the trunk. I've got the number two detailer brush again and I'm just going to make a few little marks following the trunk down with a fairly dry brush. I'll we'll take some of the paint off it so it's a little drier just so that I grab a little bit of the texture of the paper and give the impression of bark. Just a little bit using the side of the brush there just to catch the bark and I think that's plenty. So there we have the finished tree. You might not think it a good idea really to put cerulean blue in a tree trunk but I think it really works well because it gives that hint of green and at the same time a touch of grey. And here you can see this in the context of the finished picture. For this one I want to show you how to get convincing looking reflections in a body of water like a river or a brook. I started off by masking out the area of the water and I've painted in a background using a variety of greens and browns and a little glimpse of the sky colour at the top. I need to mask out part of the bank before I actually start painting the water. So I'm going to take a masking fluid brush, just dampen it and rub it on a bit of soap. I find this makes the brush last a lot longer as they become gummed up quite easily with masking fluid. I'm going to get the masking fluid and put a little bit onto this bank here. These are really areas that I'm protecting so that I don't smudge them when I start actually painting the water. That may seem confusing but once I paint the water it will make sense. 
and all this bank here, anywhere where I'm going to have the water behind it, I'm putting on the masking fluid to protect the bank. So before I actually paint the river, that needs some time to dry. So now that the masking fluid's dried, we can have a look at the water itself. There are two sections to it, really. The part in the distance where it starts to tumble over the rocks and go down the weir. We only get a glimpse of this, but it is a little bit different. There's more white in it, there's more movement in it. Whereas where the water is more still, more towards the foreground, we get the feeling of reflections. So I'm going to start with a little bit of colour that I used in the sky. This is a little bit of cobalt blue and rose madder. I'm just going to put a few little streaks of this colour in, give the impression of the water rushing over the weir there, rushing over that edge. There isn't much to see here because it's quite subtle and you've got to remember here that the white paper is actually as important as the paint itself. Before I do the rest of it, I do need to let that paint dry. I've mixed my colours for the reflections in the water. I'm going to start with a number 10 brush full of clean water. And I'm just going to wet the whole of the river area, right up to that little white bit there, coming in under the banks. The reason I've got masking fluid on these stones here is that I can wash right up to them, same with that one there, and not smudge them. Now that the river's completely wet, I'm going to start with a little glimpse of the colour from the sky and drop that in more at the, f at the foreground of the water. Try and leave a bit of white paper in the middle as well. The white paper will help to suggest the bright light. Still with the number 10 brush, I've got this rich green on the bank here that I want to reflect in the water. So more or less following the shape of the bank, but upside down to indicate reflection, I've put that in with a touch of bright green and a little bit of lemon yellow as well there. I can see on the bank there's a little bit of raw sienna and burnt sienna as well, so we'll drop a little touch of that in. And under this bank at the left, there's even more of that raw sienna and burnt sienna. So I'm dropping that in. There's a little bit of the blue from the sky, the cobalt blue and rose madder, maybe with a touch more rose madder to make it slightly redder. And then there's quite a lot of dark brown under here. So I've got some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And directly under that dark stone, I'm placing some of that dark. Like under, under the whole of the bank there, there's quite a bit of dark colour. And I'm just trying to preserve that tiny little line of dry white paper. Now there's some stones on the edge of this bank here, so we'll put a few little darks in for those as well. And then while that's still damp, I'm going to take a half inch flat brush and I want the brush to be moist, but not wet through. So I find the best way to do that is to just take the moisture off from between my fingers. And then I'm just going to try and drag the color down vertically to create the feeling of reflection. And then I think we need a bit more dark under that bank, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, and I'm putting a touch more of the dark in immediately. Immediately under the bank there's the reflection from the stones, and the same there, a little touch of it in there as well. And with the damp brush again, the half inch flat brush, the idea with this is not to drag the colour off, but to be quite subtle and just try to blur the colour. And here you can see this effect in the context of the finished picture. 